Sega. We had numerous different ideas that we proposed for having a flying character, but the team members really liked the idea of setting the game inside of a dream world. Once we decided to go with a dream world, what we wanted to do was something that wouldn't just be some kind of fantastical dream, but more representative of actual dreams that people might have at night. I read a lot of books and other literature about dreams and the deep psyche, in order to learn how to faithfully create an actual dream. There are a lot of books out there by experts. The primary foundation I used was the work of Carl Jung, but I referenced the works of several people who had done proper scientific research on the topic of dreams, in order to construct the dream world and also the characters that appear in those dreams. Because of this, I could hear about people's dreams and go, Oh, that means such and such. And so for a while, members of my team would come up to me and ask things like, Hey, so I had a dream about this last night. What does that mean? And I'd say, Okay, that means you have residual trauma from this sort of event in your past. So I was acting sort of like a dream interpreter. After a while, I started realizing that it revealed deep-seated psychological issues and emotional scarring and other things I probably shouldn't have been privy to, and I figured maybe I should quit while I was ahead. To put it simply, different people have issues inside themselves that they need to overcome, or some sort of conflict deep within themselves. And dreams give us a means of visualizing those conflicts when we go to sleep. That's how dreams work in the real world, at any rate. The character of nights represents what's known in psychology as the shadow, which is sort of an alter self. When a man dreams, he'd see his alter self as male. And when a woman dreams, she'd naturally see her alter self as female. In creating knights, we wanted a character that could conceivably look both male or female, and so that's why we went with a gender-neutral character. When the knights project was still in its initial phases, the team we had was made up of people who had been working on Sonic titles, where he's running all the time, and we'd already decided from the outset that we were going to make a flying game. So now we have this game, which in English you'd call a platform action game. Except this was a platform action game without any platforms. So we had to figure out how exactly we'd even be able to do that. We came up with dozens of different rules and concepts for what sort of thing the character would be able to do in a game like this. But So we ended up in a situation where we were constantly going, well, how about this? How about this? And then we'd try it out and it wouldn't work. There was a lot of trial and error involved. The biggest thing for me was wanting to create a game world for knights that would be as close as possible to bringing out the feel of an actual dream world. That's one of the things I like most about knights is the fact that, as far as I can think of, knights might be the only game character that a person could ever actually really meet. I really like the idea that fans might look forward to the chance of possibly meeting the real knights whenever they go to sleep at night. <laughs> 